Almighty and gracious Father, strengthen us by the Holy Spirit that our hearts may be set free, free from all worldly thoughts, so that we may hear and we may receive all the words and recognize the graciousness of you. Help us to love and to serve, to serve you with delight. Be with us <clears throat> as we listen to the word and let it support us and get us through all that is ahead of us. We know you are always with us and are there to give us the peace, the love, the hope, and the courage to go on each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. Through, I guess, 9. Wait. Wait. Eight. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Thank you, Matt. As I thought of what kind of a message I could bring to you, I thought I would want you to refresh your memory in the messages that we've received the four weeks of Advent. The wonderful gifts that we receive at Christmas. The hope, the peace, the joy, the love, and especially the light. On Christmas Eve, we experience our full lighting of the Advent wreath, Christ candle, and all our candles lit in the church to remind us that the light came and Jesus is the light of the world. I put with all that has been going on the past two and a half years, I guess we could say, we need courage. We need to stay in the word and we need to be encouraged. And if we stay in the word, we won't go away from the Lord. If we stop reading, if we stop Bible study, if we stop devotions, it will be hard to stay with the Lord and to follow the Lord. So let's start this year out by doing our devotions, doing Bible studies, reading our Bible. You know, the more you read, the more you know. And the more you know, the more you will grow. And we need, we need to have the peace of the Lord with us to get through the many things that come in our lives. We all know this past year, we've all had different things to contend with. The last 
three years, but we have continued. We have continued to keep our church open. We have continued to bring the word. So I pray that you all remember the messages that were brought to you throughout our Lenten, our, Lenten, our Advent series, and just remember all that was sent to us when God sent his son. All that his son did for us. We must always, always remember to thank him. And we must always remember that we can go to him at any time and he is there for us. Courage takes clarity and our courage develops with a strong faith in Jesus and our Father. Our greatest obstacle to Christian belief is fear rather than doubt. There's a great resistance to change and we need courage. We cannot doubt. When we become clear about how we see the world, we will feel better. People don't like change. They don't like anything that disrupts their status quo. We have to Remember not to fear changes. We constantly have changes. I was ready to just have a quiet, lazy evening, and all of a sudden that all changed. But going to the Lord, praying for guidance, it all happened, and I am here this morning. And I pray, I pray that this service will bless all of you and that it will be good words for you to remember for the coming year. We pray that this year will be a much better year than we have been going through. Unfortunately, when people fear, people become separated. And then it starts to cause division amongst, amongst us. And we don't want that. We want to be here to support one another. We are always talking about the church family and being here for one another. I pray that everyone here can be here for one another, that we will be here to support all that goes on. We all need that. We all need that. When we get a calling from God to make changes, we also get the challenge of the calling to be cautious. Jesus knew what his life and his ministry was about, but he did face resentment and opposition. He was sure that he was here on a mission and he was to reconcile humanity back to God regardless, regardless of the opposition. He knew that the road to Calvary was part of his journey, and that's how much our God loves us. Have you ever thought about what your life is about lately? Do we have the courage to peruse it? Courage is easier to exhibit when we know that we are in communion with God and within the company of others who possess similar knowledge, our church family. We are here to share with one another 
and to give one another the courage, the courage to go on. This is why time spent in spiritual disciplines like prayer, Bible study, and worship, or making room for quiet time just to meditate with God is very, very important. Don't be uncomfortable to be alone with your Lord. He wants you to spend time with him, and you need to spend time with him. So always be willing to share what you have with the Lord who did so much for us. If you want to be courageous, take time to find clarity of purpose or clarity about what is really going on in your life, in society and in the world, and seek the will of the Holy Spirit. Then begin to act. You may be surprised at how an ordinary person like you and like me find what John Lewis called good trouble, necessary trouble, or how you can offer peace and blessings to the lives that are around you. We have been called by God to work in his vineyard. And yes, we are to be working, work for the Lord. Be there every day and spend part of that day working for the Lord. Don't put that aside that you do not have time. Work for the Lord, get into the word, and praise God for all that has been given to us. There are many things that can be taken away from us, but you cannot take away the calling of the Lord. We all, we all have been called to be disciples, and we must pursue that. And we must bring the word to all around us. I pray that this year will be a year full of blessings for all of us and that our church will grow, our faith will grow, and we will have the faith, the hope, the love, the courage to help all around us as good Christians should. I ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us, and I wish you all a very happy, happy New Year. Amen. Amen.